Welcome back to Ice Path Sports. I'm Matt, and this is the final 2023 mock draft uh, of Ice Path Sports. Yeah, um, let's just get right into it. We got the Carolina Panthers with the first overall pick. Uh, you know, there's lots of quarterbacks here um, that are available in this draft that have promise, but the most pro-ready, most polished is Bryce Young. Uh, he's drawn pro comps to what? Drew Brees, younger Russell Wilson. Uh, I mean, the guy's football IQ is unlike anything we've really seen. Uh, he's he's smart, and there are you know concerns about his size. Um, you know, so, some people think that Anthony Richardson could be the play here, but I think that's you know too much of a risk to take. You know, a, a quarterback that raw first overall. Um, I mean, C.J. Stroud. I'm not a huge C.J. Stroud fan. Um, I think that. You know, he, he's an inconsistent passer. Uh, I don't think his football IQ and decision-making is all there, uh, especially, you know, he had that, uh, th they did that that mental test and he scored like super low on it, right? I think he got like an 18% or something. You know, I think Will Levis could be a surprise number one overall pick here. Um, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be shocked to see him go number one, but I think Bryce Young is the safe pick here for the Carolina Panthers. Um, so we're going to go Bryce Young. Uh, and I... This is kind of a mix of what I think these teams should do and uh, what what I think they will do. Um, not not to mention, this is also going to be uh, no trades. It's just easier that way, you know. Once once you have one trade, it kind of can mess up your whole draft. So we got the Texans here too. You know, CJ Stroud should be the easy pick for them. I'm not a huge CJ Stroud fan. I think Richardson Levis. If you're going to take one of them you're probably better off just staying with Davis Mills. I mean, Will Levis, I think, is the most, the second most pro-ready quarterback coming out of this draft. But uh, I don't know. I mean, th there's been a lot of reports that the Texans are going to go defense here. Um, you got to make a Ryan's their new coach, defensive-minded guy. And, uh, you know, so it could, you know, you could go Stroud here at quarterback and hopefully get your quarterback of the future. Or you can go... Tyree Wilson or Will Anderson. There's been, that's the other thing. Will Anderson and Tyree Wilson, kind of 1A, 1B in this draft uh, as of late. You know, some people think Wilson might go ahead of Anderson, but I think Anderson is probably the best overall player in this draft. Um, he's just an amazing edge rusher. And, you know, Houston is always pride, proud of themselves. Prided? Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, they've always been proud of their defense. I think Will Anderson's the pick here. They will either wait to get a quarterback or trade back up into the top 10 to, to select one. Or they rolled Davis Mills for another year. I'm not sure what they do at quarterback. We'll see how the draft board lands. Uh, but at number three, we have the Arizona Cardinals. And Jalen Carter is here, but he has some character concerns, a lot of off-the-field issues. Um, and at his pro day, he didn't look that great. Uh, I think Tyree Wilson uh, reminds me a lot of how Trayvon Walker was last year, how he rose up the boards really fast just because his overall athleticism. Uh, he didn't have, like, the best production in college, but, uh, you know, hopefully he can put it all together for the NFL. I think the, the Cardinals are going to take Tyree Wilson here. If they stick with the pick, I could see them training down. Next up, we have the Colts. The Colts are really needy for a quarterback. You got Gardner Minshew they're trying out there as of right now on that depth chart. Um, CJ Stroud's on the board, Anthony Richardson, Will Levis. But there's a lot of reports that the Colts, Jim Irsay, Chris Ballard, they all love Will Levis. Uh, I don't know how, if this is smoke and mirrors, if there's a lot of truth to this. But um, I, I know personally I have Will Levis as a, a, a top-rated quarterback in this draft. So I'm, I'm going to rock with Levis going to the Colts. I feel like that's a nice match right there. Uh, and next up, we have the Seattle Seahawks at pick five. Now, this is where things get a little dicey because I could see them going in multiple directions. You have you still have a, a young secondary, not a lot of depth there. So I could see you know a Christian Gonzalez type guy going here. I mean, you, you signed Geno Smith to a three year deal. Um, is he your your you know guy for the next decade? No, but you know he's going to fill that role for the next couple of years. Drafting somebody like Anthony Richardson or Project would be you know maybe wise, but I, I'm not I'm not entirely sold on Pete Carroll giving up on Geno, uh, you know, right away after they just paid him all that money. Um, what they could use is some help in the front seven with both uh, Anderson and Wilson off the board. I think they're going to go best available, which is Jalen Carter, but I would not be surprised to see them go something like uh, maybe Miles Murphy or Nolan Smith, um, just because the Seahawks aren't afraid to reach. Um, but I think Jalen Carter would be a nice fit there uh, on their defensive line. So we're going to go Jalen Carter. 
And next up, we have the Detroit Lions at pick six. Uh, another team, you know, you got Jared Goff. You, you were owing him a lot of money, but last year he played lights out. Um, you know, I mean, that offense is really potent. You could use some defensive help. They started to rebuild that secondary. Uh, you trade away Jeff Okuda. You know, you looked good, but then you trade away Jeff Okuda. So now they do have another hole at corner. Uh, Christian Gonzalez is on the board. Uh, him and Witherspoon, uh, it's a toss-up. But I think Gonzalez is a better fit for Detroit's defense. I'm going to rock with uh, Gonzalez out of Oregon. Uh, going to the Lions. Now we have the Raiders at 7. Now... I think the Raiders are licking their chops here, seeing C.J. Stroud here at seven, um, because I, I'm not sure um, Josh McDaniels is sold on Anthony Richardson. You know, he's just he's so raw. You really need to be patient with him. You got Jimmy Garoppolo. You, you need a quarterback that you can develop behind the scenes, but also you know can step in if Garoppolo gets injured, which he's known to do. I think Stroud would be a, a nice fit here for the Raiders. Um, you know, you put him into an offense that has lots of weapons to work with, um, and you know, Jimmy Garoppolo to, to teach him. And if Jimmy G goes down, Stroud can step in. Uh, so we're gonna go Stroud here to the Raiders at seven. And now at pick eight, we have the Falcons. Now there's been some uh, rumors that Bajan Robinson is not making it past eight with the Falcons. I think that's total BS. Uh, I think top ten for a running back is absurd. You know, we've learned with Saquon Barkley. Going back in like 2018, like I think that was the last time a running back went top 10, right? Um, I could be wrong, but, but like I'm pretty sure I'm not. Anyway, enough of that. But running back top 10, I just I don't see the value there. Running backs are a dime a dozen. But John Robinson is a playmaker, don't get me wrong, but I just can't see uh, the Falcons taking him there. But the Falcons also are the type uh, of team to go best available. So. Maybe they could take Bajan. I don't. I don't think so though. Their secondary is pretty stacked. You got. Uh, they trade for Okuda. Speaking of Okuda, we were just talking about him. Trade for Okuda. You have AJ Terrell. You uh, sign Jesse Bates in free agency. You got a couple other really good guys in there. Um, I, I'm a big Miles Murphy fan, but I think Nolan Smith stays in Atlanta or in Georgia. I'm sorry, and goes to Atlanta. Here, he's just he, he's a beast. You can. You know, kind of play him all over the over the place with his athleticism. Very versatile defender, and he's going to be productive. Um, you know, the Falcons have really built up that defense. I think he'd be a really nice fit there. You know, especially you got guys like Clayus Campbell, Lorenzo Carter, uh, Bud Dupree, all getting up there in age, and you know, none are really the most. Uh, well, Clayus Campbell's proven to be healthy, but guys like Bud Dupree and Lorenzo Carter you know, can't always stay on the field. So bringing Nolan Smith into that rotation would be wise. Um, Chicago at nine needs protection for Justin Fields. You, uh, you killed it last year. You got Braxton, uh, Braxton Jones, was it? They're the offense tackle they drafted last year, uh, relatively late and, and he's turned into a stud for them. But I think on the other side, you have Tevin Jenkins, who's better fit to be a guard. I think you'd use another offensive tackle here. Give Justin Fields that protection. You invest in him uh, by giving him weapons. Uh, now you invest in him again in the draft by giving him some protection. I think Paris Johnson Jr., uh, probably the the most upside, not the most upside of tackles in the draft, but the most pro-ready of the tackles in the draft. I think he's a beast. We're going to go Paris Johnson here at number nine to Chicago. That brings us to pick 10. We got my Philadelphia Eagles. Um... I would love Eagles to trade down here. He's still got Anthony Richardson on the board. Um, I mean, I hate to see him go outside the top 10, but you got Titans, you got the the Texans coming up. Two teams that are, you know, need quarterbacks. Uh, I could definitely see a team hopping up and jumping uh, them both, like Washington or the Bucks in the 10 range, but again, no trades. You know, Bajon Robinson has been linked to Philadelphia. He's been heavily linked to Philadelphia, um, but I'm not. I'm not like super convinced of that. I don't think. I I really don't think we take a running back in the top top ten. Uh, if he's there, you know, down here, pick thirty. Yeah, I, I I would like that pick. I would very much enjoy that pick. But right now, we have to look at um, place of need. You know, I love Brian Branch, but I feel like this is a little too early for him. Um, you know, yeah, just safety again, number ten overall. I'm not a big fan of. So you look at you know offensive tackles. Lane Johnson's probably going to retire soon. Uh, Skaronsky's on there. He's really versatile. He can play 
guard. He can play tackle. He's probably more suited for guard. Broderick Jones out of Georgia is a beast, but I think you can kind of wait. You know, Lane, Lane still has some juice in him. You have Jack, Jack Driscoll behind him. Uh, let's go to defense and best available defense. I mean, Devin Witherspoon corner could be a, a, a need. It's him or Miles Murphy for me. I'm not a big fan of Lucas Van Ness. Um, you know, sure he's he's an athletic beast, but he didn't get a lot of playing time at Iowa, which concerns me. Um, Miles Murphy we've seen can be productive. De- same with Devin Witherspoon. Um, Darius Slade, James Bradbury both getting there up up there in age. Uh, Avante Maddox. You know, he, he's solid. And you got Greedy Williams on a one-year deal. I'm going to go Devin Witherspoon here for the Eagles at 10. Uh, get some more secondary depth. Uh, and somebody learned by, behind Slay and Bradbury. Hopefully can uh, continue to dominate. Uh, now pick 11. This is an easy pick. The Tennessee Titans, you know, consider moving up. Uh, I've heard a lot of rumors that they might move up into the top five for this guy in particular. And that's Anthony Richardson. You have Ryan Tannehill and Malik Willis. They don't believe in Malik Willis. Uh, Ryan Tannehill is kind of washed. Uh, we're going to go Anthony Richardson here for Tennessee at pick 11. You start him by, or you start Tannehill for another year. You have Anthony Richardson behind him, and hopefully by next year, Richardson is ready to contribute to that offense. Uh, and pick 12, we have the Houston Texans. They beefed up their defense with Will Anderson at pick 2. Here we are 10 picks later. Um, and, I mean, they have, I think they have a solid offensive line. Wow, this is tough because now all the quarterbacks are really gone. Uh, Hennon Hooker, this is too early for him, and he's what twenty five. Um, I think the Texans are better off if the if they're in this position, rolling out Davis Mills for one more year. Uh, if Davis Mills does not develop, they have a high pick next year. They can go out, they can get Caleb Williams or Drake May, one of those top guys. Um, but here at pick twelve, you know you you either got to beef up that defense. Or you got to get some more weapons for Davis Mills. Um, right now, it's uh, I'm going to go Jackson Smith and Jigba. I think I think he'd be a really good fit there uh, in Houston. You pair him with hopefully John Mechie is back. You know Mechie, this would be kind of like a rookie season for him. Uh, you know would they send Dalton Schultz in free agency? He's probably their best receiver right now. So they don't, they don't really have many options for Mills. You got Pierce out of the backfield, but he's not really a pass catcher. They did sign Devin Singletary, but again, you know he's not really known for his hands. Uh, Jack Smith and Jigga would you know provide a reliable receiver for Mills, and uh, you know he he would walk into a Houston receiving core that you know there's not much competition in. You know you got Robert Woods, but you know again he's kind of washed. Um, Next, we have the Packers at 13. They inherited this in the trade that sent Aaron Rodgers to the New York Jets. They swapped these picks. Um, they gave up a conditional first next year. Uh, Packers got a second this year. Um, you know, and then a bunch of other scraps. But the Packers are at 13. Um, this is going to be an unpopular pick. But I think they really could use um, some offensive line help. Their offensive line has been consistently injured. Bakhtiari, I mean, I don't think he's played a full season in years. Um, you know, you have Jordan Love, you're trying out there. They could use a receiver too. They could use a receiver. But I think you can probably get a decent receiver in the second round. Um, you know, with no Jack Smith and Jigba here, I think it's too early for someone like Jordan Addison or Quentin Johnson. I do like Zay Flowers. Maybe they trade back up in the first for Zay Flowers. But in this situation, I'm going to get him, them some, some protection. Um, although Broderick Jones is a beast. I like Skronsky's versatility and how he can play anywhere on the offensive line. And maybe you start him at like right tackle and, if, you know, you can fill him in elsewhere if injuries occur. Um, I'm going to go Skronsky. Next up, we have the Patriots at 14. Um, now, another team that could use a receiver, but could also use some offensive line help. Um, you know, Pajan Robinson's still sitting there, but they have Ramondre Stevenson. Uh yeah, you know, I I don't think Brajan I think Brajan falls a little bit just because of how running backs are, are perceived in the league. Uh Broderick Jones is there. I do like Broderick Jones. Uh I could also see Miles Murphy though. So I'm trying to get in the head of Bill Belichick right now. Um I think they've done a lot to surround Mac Jones with weapons this offseason. Uh you got James Robinson they signed. You get gave, gave him what? Um they, they got Mike Gusecki. Uh Didn't they get a receiver? Yeah, Juju Smith-Schuster, right? So, like, 
they're giving Mac Jones some weapons. Why not give him protection? Give him, uh, you know, the, I, I think they lost uh, Isaiah Wynn in free agency. Uh, I'm going to rock with Broderick Jones. All right, we got to hurry up. This video is already 15 minutes long, and I'm only on pick 15. We got the New York Jets. Again, another team that needs protection, uh, especially for Aaron Rodgers. Makai Becton's coming back. Uh, you got Darnell right there. Um, this is tough. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you can you can argue edge. You got Miles Murphy still up on the board. Well, you know, or do you get some another weapon for Aaron Rodgers here? Um, I would hate to have a third offensive tackle go in a row. Um, you could beef up that secondary, get Brian Branch. You got Sauce Gardner um, back there that you drafted in the first round last year. I kind of like a Brian Branch pick here because I, I know um, their safety wasn't really the, the strong suit of their team last year. And, I mean, Branch can play kind of all over that secondary. I'm going to go Branch, get an offensive tackle in a second. All right, we got the the Washington uh, what Commanders now. Uh, it's pick 16. Ooh, I mean, Miles Murphy's still on the board. He continues his drop. Uh, this is a team that, you know, they could use a lot, but especially at quarterback. Um, they all, I mean, they also could use some help in the secondary as well, uh, if I'm not mistaken. You got Joey Porter there, Deontay Banks. Uh, I mean, none of these linebackers, I, I think it's a little early for them to go. Uh, I mean, D-tackle, they're fine. They just signed De'Aaron Payne. They just signed him. You have Jonathan Allen. Uh, the edge, you have Sweat and Chase Young. So, you know, this team has a solid defense. Um, I could see Joey Porter Jr. being the pick here, honestly. Uh, yeah, I, I think, or, or do you think they go tight end here? You know, there, there's so much tight end talent in this draft, though. I think the tight ends might not go as high as people are thinking. This is another tough one. Um, you know, Deontay Banks. I, I'm, I have Joey Porter a little higher than Banks, so I'm going to go Porter here at 16. All right, 17. We have the Steelers, who I'm sure were eyeing Joey Porter, but Miles Murphy is here. Pair him with TJ Watt, and that makes for a killer pass rush. We're going to go Miles Murphy. Easy pick at 17. Here we go, 18 uh, are, is Detroit. They went Christian Gonzalez at pick six, at pick 18. Um Ooh, Luke's Van Ness is here. Foskey's here. Um, I mean, they they have a great offensive line. They're solid receiving core. Um, the running backs include DeAndre Swift and David Montgomery. Like that's it's pretty solid. So you know, Bajan again is going to continue to fall. Uh, you know, I don't think they need any more receivers. You have Amonra St. Brown. You have um, James well Jameson Williams to get suspended. Hmm. It's a tough one. Uh, you know what? They need tight end bad. I think this is where the first tight end goes off the board. And though Kincaid is ranked one one ranking higher than my Mayer, I like Michael Mayer. I think he's a complete tight end. He's pro ready. We're gonna go Mayer there. Uh, you know, you go you go defense pick six. You come back. You go offensive pick eighteen. Dan Campbell, I believe, was a former tight end, so it makes sense that they would take a tight end in the first round. And here we go. Pick nineteen is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think Bajan Robinson could you know potentially go here. But instead, I'm going to go Darnell Wright out of Tennessee. Um, the the blind side, the left tackle was a huge weakness for uh, the Bucks last year. Donovan Smith got cut. You replace him with Darnell Wright here in the first round. You got him and Werfs. Uh, you know, the interior is still a little sus. I'm Ryan Jensen's anchoring down the middle, though. Uh, but improve that offensive line and see if Baker Mayfield can cook for you. Uh, Seattle's back up on the clock after going, what, Jalen Carter at five is right. Uh, this is a team that, you know, again, what I, I mentioned earlier that they have a young secondary, not a lot of depth in it. I, I could see a uh, cornerback here, someone like Deontay Banks. Um, but again, you have Kenneth Walker in that backfield. I'm, I'm trying to think offensively, you know, because th their defense is pretty solid. Um, I could see edge. Hmm. It's 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 edge or receiver for me because you got Tyler Lockett, you got DK Metcalf, like nobody behind them. Um, if you can give Geno Smith another weapon, that'd be pretty cool. Mm. But I, I I don't know. I think Isaiah Foskey. 
is somebody that P. Carroll might fall in love with. Might want to take here at 20. I'm going to go Foskey above Lucas Van Ness. 21, we have the Chargers. Now, the Chargers are a team that uh, doesn't really need a lot. Um, I mean, I could see them going after like a D-tackle, but I think, I think it's a little early for Breesy. I do like uh, Clyde Jacansi. Um This is another team I can see going receiver. I mean, Mike Williams is always hurt. Keenan Allen's getting up there in age. You got Josh Palmer, but Palmer has been the definition of mediocre his entire career. This is kind of a luxury pick. I mean, if they trade Austin Eckler prior to the draft, I could see them totally taking Bajan uh, here at 21. But I think they're going to go for immediate impact, somebody that can help the run game and the receiving game in Dalton Kincaid. Uh, and we're going to go tight end here at pick 21, which brings us to pick 22, the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, and again, another team I could see going Bajan. Bajan's continue to fall, but I just... I don't see the value in picking a a running back in the first round unless it's pretty late. Uh, you got J.K. Dobbins coming back who looked decent last year. The Ravens could go for another receiver, though. I mean, you got Odell Beckham Jr., you have Rashad Bateman. Um, receivers, you got Quentin Johnson, Jordan Addison, Zay Flowers. Um, Odell's... Injury history, I think I think receiver might be the play here. Receiver or secondary. I like Deontay Banks a lot. Or you you have defensive line, too. I mean, you lost... Who's out there for edge? Lucas Van Ness is still out there. You did lose... Uh, oh, what's his name? Clayce Campbell. You know, so there there is a lot here. I think... I think they're... I think they're I was going to say, I think they're sound receiver. I also see them going receiver to try to please... Lamar Jackson, who still is yet to sign. It's, do I want Van Ness or do I want Jordan Addison? I mean, Addison was so consistent in college. But Luke's Van Ness, they could use a pass rusher. I'm going to go Van Ness here for the Ravens. Um, 23, we have the Minnesota Vikings. Now, this could be a surprise pick. I could see them going somewhere like Hendon Hooker here, taking a shot on him. Um, you know, this is a team that's really tried to transform their defense drastically. Uh, I mean, they lost Adam Thielen, so they, I could see them going receiver. There, there's a lot of different uh, ways the, the Vikings can draft here. I mean, I think they have more holes on their team than not. Uh, and they're thinking about, you know, getting rid of Dalvin Cook. So, again, another perplexing team. What do they do? Um, you know, they, they put that emphasis on defense. I think their their offense definitely runs through Jefferson. You got TJ Hawkinson, I guess, is your second option there. So I, I turn my head to defense. I really like Deontay Banks. Um, who else would they go? I mean, Cansey maybe? You know what? Yeah, I'm going to go Kalaja Cansey, uh, 23 to the Vikings. I think that's a good fit there. Now you got uh, 24, you have the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, I, I, I can see them going Banks. You know, th this is a team that the J Jaguars, when you look at the whole spectrum, they're fairly complete aside from their secondary. So it's between Deontay Banks and Cam Smith for me personally. Um, I think I think Banks. I'm gonna give Banks the edge. I'm gonna go Banks here at 24. And New York Giants. New York Giants. Our team. They have about you know, probably the the record for the most wide receiver threes in the league. Um, <laughs> between Darius Slayton, Sterling Shepard, Wandale Robinson. Um, so I mean, I, they they definitely need a wide receiver one. But they have so many wide receivers already on their roster. Uh, Isaiah Hodgins, another one. Mm. But, I mean, but their defense is fairly complete. Uh, they're they're also a team that could use some secondary help, though. Uh, Cam Smith is out there. Mm. But the, you know what? Cornerback is so deep in this draft. I think Joe Shane pulls the trigger and gets a wide receiver one, and he wants the safe bet. He's going to go Jordan Addison here, which brings up uh, 
you know, they're, they're investing uh, into Jan Daniel Jones. So want to get him another weapon. 26, you got the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, Tony Pollard coming off that injury. I mean, again, this is a team, another sneaky team for Bijan Robinson, but I just I don't see the value in taking running back this this high in the draft. Um, I mean, Dallas has a solid offensive line. They traded for Brandon Cooks. They're they're trying to go all in, but this is also another team that needs a tight end. Uh, Darnell Washington. This might be a reach for him. I mean, they they have what Paint Hendershot. And who's the other guy they got last year in the draft? Was it the kid from Wisconsin? I'm totally blanking. Uh, I could see them going Quentin Johnson. Uh, I don't know. But again, Jerry Jones tends to go best player available. So who on this board is best player available right now? This is a tough one. Um, we're going to go Darnell Washington, I think. I don't think he's best player available. But I think he gives Dak Prescott another weapon. And a, a big one at that. So we got three tight ends going in the first round. Um, if you had told me that going into this draft, I'd say you're crazy. Uh, but we got the Buffalo Bills here at 27. Uh, let's, I'm going to try to wrap this up quick because I'm taking like a minute per pick. Uh, Buffalo Bills, uh, this is a team that I think could definitely benefit from having another receiver on the roster. Uh, there, I've seen some rumors of Stephon Diggs wanting out. I don't know how much truth there is to that, but behind Diggs... You don't really have anybody else. Gabe Davis, I mean, it isn't that impressive. He hasn't taken the next step. But I think Quentin Johnson can step in as a wide receiver three or four and develop into that wide receiver one for whenever Diggs, you know, either leaves or decides to hang it up or, you know, however he departs the organization. I'm going to go Quentin Johnson here. He's a big frame. He's really fast. He's a, a dynamic playmaker and would add a whole new layer to this Buffalo offense. 28, we have the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, Cincinnati Bengals, I mean, they one of the best receiving cores in the league. Um, but they could always benefit from, you know, defensive help. Uh, their offensive line, I mean, has been sus at best. I don't know. I mean, you got Bijan here, but I think, I think he continues his fall. Let me look. Let me look. I mean, you still got Osiris Torrance on the board. I think he could definitely be in contention for this pick. But looking at the edges left, mm, Will McDonald might not make it past the, the Bengals. I think Will McDonald goes here. You know what? Sam Hubbard, Trey Hendrickson, but both are getting up there in age a little bit. And it's always good to have multiple pass rushers. And Will McDonald, I mean, you, you rotate him in. You know, you might want to even slide somebody inside. I don't know. I, I don't know how you'd use him, but uh, I think he would benefit that defense. And now we have the Saints at pick 29. What do the Saints need? Um, They got Derek Carr at quarterback. Michael Thomas is coming back. You have Chris Olave. I mean, their receivers look okay. Uh, Kamara, that suspension's up in the air, but they go and they get Jamal Williams. Um, you're in a weak division. That defense is getting up there in age, though. Um, what could that defense use? I mean, you get like Demario Davis, who's still playing elite, but he's he's getting up there. Uh, maybe someone like Trent Simpson here. But what what would what would the Saints do? Um, they could probably use some secondary help. Yeah, I'm going to go Cam Smith, South Carolina. Uh, I think that's a solid pick for the Saints. Improve that secondary a little bit, especially you're you're in a uh, division with Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. Um, you know, both those guys you got to cover. Uh, and Panthers have what? Adam Thielen. They're not too scary, but the Falcons, Kyle Pitts, Drake London. You know, you, you have some threats in there, so add some secondary help. 30, I think this is where Brian Robinson's false stops. Uh, you have Philly, who this is a luxury pick for them. I hate it because, I I mean, as much of a playmaker he is, I just don't see the value in taking a running back in the first round. But you have two first-round picks. With your first one, you go you improve the secondary. With your second one, you uh, you know get a playmaker for the offense, another one for Jalen Hurts. And maybe you, you take some pressure off your you know $250 million quarterback by 
you know, running Bajan Robinson out there uh, on, you know, fourth and short plays instead of your, you know, stud quarterback. Um, finally, yeah, the final pick of the draft, we got Kansas City Chiefs, um, and the Chiefs are going to go Zay Flowers. You got Speedster on the outside um, for Mahomes. You know, they don't really, they, they lost Juju. I mean, they have Travis Kelsey and who else? Marquez Valdez Scantling is their next best receiver. Yeah, get out of here. Um, uh, this is weird. It's not showing me a summary, but, uh, these are, I mean, these are all the picks in the draft. Oh, here we go. Full results. Bryce Young, Will Anderson, Tyree Wilson, Levis Carter, Gonzalez. I mean, you can take a look here. Uh, yeah, I, I really like how this draft came out. I think it's fairly realistic it, yet it, you know, switches things up a little bit and also addresses some team's needs. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. We've gone on for 31 minutes. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow us on Instagram, uh, TikTok, all that stuff. Uh, and yeah, stay cool.